Okay, let's read another book. Camp Tiger. Look at all these camping stuff. It's pretty cool. There's the first aid kit. Camp Tiger. I think they're going to go camping. Every year, my mom and dad and brother and I go camping at Mountain Pond. We drive a long time on the highway and then a long time on the roads that zigzag until we read until we're on a road that's just dirt and rocks. The pine trees scrape the sides of our car. I think we're lost. And then the road sacks and there's Mountain Pond like a mirror in the trees. In it's September, the end of summer. As soon as we get back from camping, we go back to school. My brother's starting fourth grade and I'm starting first grade. I don't want to be a first grader. I like kindergarten. I like choice time and building blocks. I hope our camping trip never ends. We have a campsite on the far side of the pond and with a big mountain staring behind it starting behind it. My parents both really like it. It's so beautiful, they say, and so quiet. We take out our stuff out of the car and talk about all the things we'll see. The eagle fishing for the eagle fishing for its dinner in the pond. The salamander with red spots on its back the chipmunks that come to steal food while we sit by our campfire. The air feels cool. I find a red leaf on the ground. While, while we're working on the tent, everyone gets really still. My mom puts out her hand in the way that means don't move and don't talk. A tiger steps silently out of the woods and stands next to a stone fireplace. The tiger is orange with black stripes and has a stern face and big heavy paws. But it seems smaller than the tiger it should be. It's still big, like our neighborhood's German Shepherd that scares me sometimes on the sidewalk. But for a tiger, it's small. It doesn't scare me. It also looks thin and it talks. Do you have an extra tent? asked the tiger. Now, I have a cave, but I still feel cold. I know that we do. It's a two-person tent that we, that we brought as a place for me and my brother to play if it rains. Yes, my dad finally says while my mom stares at him. We'll set up when we finish this one. We set up the two tents in silence. I noticed that while we're working, the tiger starts acting like a cat, a more regular cat. He sits down and grooms himself slowly, especially cleaning his paws. I don't see claws. He must have them. He must have them pulled in. I think he's cleaning himself to make sh us feel comfortable with him. It works. My mom keeps looking over at him, and I can tell that she thinks he's beautiful. When we're done. My dad holds out his arm in that goofy way that means voila. Can you unzip it for me? The tiger asks. I look at his huge heavy paws. My dad does and the tiger lowers his head and steps in carefully. I follow before my parents can stop me. Sip us in please, I call back. You can sip it yourself, my mom says. Don't snag the fabric. All summer, things my mom used to do for me, like make my bed in the morning or fold up my clothes, have become things that I do myself. I can do them, but I wish she would do them. This time, though, I sip the tent quickly before she can make me come out. Inside the tent, the tiger lies down so he's shaped like a C and puts his head on his paws 
I wrap my arms around him and bury my face in his fur. He smells like sunshine and pine needles. Tigers live in Africa, I tell him. Not Africa. Asia, he says. This isn't Africa or Asia, I tell him. No, sighs the tiger. All weekend, the tiger stays with us. When we hike on the trail, he walks first, and his paws make no sound. He knows an overlook we've never found before, where we can see the tops of the green mountains stretching away. He's cautious around water, but he comes with us on the, our canoe. He sits very still, staring out at the shore. I barely have to reach down my, to trail my hand in the water. The canoe is riding low, my dad says. Because of the weight of the tiger, I guess, we paddle slowly so we don't tip over. You've grown up too, my mom says. At the fishing spot, my brother catches a pumpkin seed fish right away, which is what always happens. I don't want to fish, I say, sitting next to the tiger. No one makes me. But after a while, I get out, and I put bait on my hook. I hate fish, I say, as I cast. I love fish, says the tiger. I'll eat any fish that you catch. I almost never catch any, I tell him. But today, I catch one. Just big enough to keep, says my dad, when he measures. I'll eat it raw, says the tiger. I like to eat the whole thing and feel its tail swish around my stomach. Urgh. We all say, but we're laughing. Hmm. We never see other people, but Mom says it's because it's late in the season. Even the park ranger never comes by. Our last night, my brother and I get to stay up extra late in the camp chairs and watch the fire until it dies out. I can see the tiger's eyes in the darkness like the very last embers. I want to look for shooting stars, I say. I want to go in the canoe, in the dark and look up at the stars. No one seems to hear but the tiger. I'll take you, he says. What an adventure. And they went into the forest, roared at the moon, jumped over cliffs, and went in the canoe. The tiger pushes his paws through the sparkling black water instead of using the paddle. I steer, which was which I was never good at except now. I steer really well. I see the stars shining deep in the water and our canoe gliding high in the sky. And then we're back and my mom and dad lift me into our tent. Not the tigers, but I'm too tired to stop them. The next morning, the tiger's gone. He didn't say goodbye, I say. It's windy and cold, and that makes my eyes run and my throat feel thick. I have a lump there. My mom tries to give me oatmeal. I push it away. It's a wild animal, my dad says. It had to go back where it came from. You can say goodbye to the lake, says my mom. I sit down by the water and put my head on my knees, so to my kneecaps are pressing against my eyeballs. I hear my brother coming over to make fun of me, but instead, he just sits down nearby. Neither of us say nothing, say anything. Leaves fly off the trees as we drive back down the mountain. It's fall, says my mom. That means it'll be cold, I say. I think of a tiger shivering in his cave. When we get home that night, I draw the tiger exactly the way he looked. I'm going to take this to show my new teacher. Time for bed, Mom says. But I get to give I get her to give me five more minutes. I want to finish my picture before I forget. All right, guys. Camp Tiger. Cool book. We'll go camping. Okay. Take all this stuff, make a list, and see the lake. Love you. Love you all. Good night.